What's up, guys? It's your boy, Pep Fernandez from the Inland Sports Show. I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for your support um, over the last several years. In fact, we're going on year number eight of the Inland Sports Show. It has certainly changed and evolved over the years, and you guys have been along for the entire journey. So thank you very much. We really appreciate it. We're on social media, so if you're already following us or subscribing, great. Um, but you can also tell your teammates, your uh, people at school, your family, your friends. There's the Inland Sports YouTube channel uh, approaching 2 million views. we got several thousand subscribers. We appreciate it. And make sure you share uh, with other folks who might not be subscribing. Same goes for Twitter. We're on Twitter as well. And if you're looking for immediate results, breaking news, we post pictures and shorter videos. Check us out on Twitter. That's Inland underscore sports on Twitter. And we're also on Facebook. Yeah, we're still doing Facebook. In fact, we live stream the Inland Sports Show on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you can check it out there live on Wednesday nights at 6.05 p.m. We're also on the Gram, the IG. Uh, if you want to see pictures and shorter videos from a lot of the games and events that we go to, you can check it out on Instagram. So if you support us by following along on social media, thank you so much. And if you'd like to take that to the next level, Inland Sports also has a Venmo account. If you'd like to financially support the show, you appreciate the service we provide to the IE, you can do that as well. Again, this is just an opportunity to say thank you to all you guys out there who follow the Inland Sports Show. You watch the Inland Sports Show each and every week. Thank you guys so much, and the best is yet to come. Welcome to the Inland Sports Show, everybody live and amplified at Teen Vision TV 16. I'm your host, Pep Fernandez, getting you all set for the CIF Southern Section semifinals in high school football. Uh, a little bit later in the show, Eric Zomalt from Rancho Verde, Joe Gerardo from Rim of the World, and Jordan Brusig at Aquinas. But we'd lead things off. This guy's on the move. Literally, he's in his truck right now. Uh, the head coach at Norda Vista, one of our all-time favorites. In fact, this guy... He's might have done the Inland Sports Show more than any other football coach that we've had. It's Ken Batdorf from oh, Norda Vista. On. I think so. <laughs> I don't think I've done it that much. No, it's just because I'm old. <laughs> and it seems like I've been around forever. That might be true, but I think you've done the show quite a bit. And, and coach, for good reason. You guys are back in the playoffs. It's been another great year for Norda Vista. I've asked you this question before, and every single time it feels like it's it's more and more important or more and more magnified. But the fact that, you know, you, the, the, the Braves started off a little bit slow, but here you are in the semifinals, in the playoffs. One went away from getting to that championship game. How rewarding has this season been for you? Um, really rewarding. I mean, obviously, our kids are overachieving, and that's what you love as a coach. Um, really proud of a bunch of our kids you know our sophomore line is doing amazing we got uh, ryan rodriguez kevin raya um those two kids are the anchors we have gio velasco and uh, ryan hurtado um four sophomores starting and when you start a sophomore you're thinking you know we're kind of in trouble especially up front when you start four you know you're kind of in trouble but Really proud of the kids. You know, Coach, obviously, if you're a local football fan, you know Norda Vista loves to run the football. So having that, that offensive line full of sophomores, having them, I don't know, mature or grow up this season or whatever you want to call it, how important was it just for the success of the running game? Because you got a couple great running backs. We do. You know, DeMarion Richardson is amazing. Pride Temple is just a freak. I, I, amazingly fantastic. Um, but – if you don't have a line, it doesn't matter how good you are. And, and the kids have gelled together. They've done great. Um, we had a tight end who was going to be in the mix. Um, Anthony, uh, unfortunately, blew his knee out. He had uh, surgeries at home. And, Anthony, we're thinking about you. Um, we miss you. 
But uh, yeah, the future is really bright for Norda Vista. Um, we don't have that many seniors, but uh, we just got to keep plugging away. And you never know. All right, Coach, how many extra gray hairs did you get this past Friday night against Gar Garden Grove in the quarterfinals? You guys won in overtime. That's the good news, but it, I don't know. It seemed like a pretty stressful game. Um, yeah, you can say that. We, uh, we had them a fourth and 32 <laughs> with, less than, with less than a minute. It was like 40 seconds left. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to put the headphones away. The game is over. And they did one of the best hook and ladders I've ever seen. Um, a guy doing a crossing route, hook and ladder to another guy coming underneath on a crossing route, and they got 35 yards. And, you know, that's that's shame on us. That should never happen. But kudos to Garden Grove for pulling it off. But at the end of the game, they score a touchdown. All they have to do is kick the extra point. And the Nord of Vista field, which everybody makes fun of, came back to save us because I told our kicker, you can't kick from the middle of the field because it's so muddy. So what they did is we always move it over about five yards and you're allowed to, most coaches don't even pay attention to that rule. Well, Garden Grove didn't know the rule. We took a timeout, put a ton of pressure on him in the mud, he kind of hooked it. So then we went to overtime. Um, but yes, a lot of gray hairs. <laughs> Yeah, when I, when I saw that score come in and, and I had a chance to you know talk to you on the phone on, on Saturday, I was like, wow, what, what, a, what a wild game out there uh, in the quarterfinals. But now you go to the semifinals. Uh, you're going on the road to Laguna Beach. Um, wh what do you know about Laguna Beach? Laguna Beach is a lot better than people think they are because, and I'll be honest, I was one of those guys you think, Laguna Beach, soft, not very, you know, tough kids. Yeah. Um, they got some really good ball players. They have a tight end who's a uh, multi offered kid. He's only a junior. He's six foot four, 230. He plays D end, uh, tight end, but they don't run a tight end, so they put him in slot. You try to cover him with a linebacker, he outruns him. Try to cover him with a DB, he throws him around. He's amazing. Uh, their quarterback is a Santa Margarita, you know, throwback. And uh, he's only a sophomore. The family thought he should have started as a sophomore there. And, you know, obviously they got some pushback, but he's fantastic. So you got some Division One talent on the team. Um, but it's also a huge, you know, we talked about our home field advantage. They have a huge one. Uh, their field's really slippery. Um, you know, I went and checked it out this weekend. Their stands are tiny. I was hoping CF would move the game, but that ain't going to happen. Well, Coach, there is a scenario, let's just assume for our conversation right now, that you guys win in the semifinals, but there is a, a scenario where you guys could host a championship game at Norta Vista uh, the following Friday, if you take care of business, obviously, this week. Um, but that would be, yeah. you know, back on your, say what you will about the home field at Norta Vista, but you guys could host a game. You know what? If we get to play there, it'd be a true blessing. And God would have said, Coach, we're going to bless you this year. And really, he already has. He's blessed me in so many ways. Um, so I'm lucky. And, and everybody complains about different things. But in the big picture, I've really been blessed. And, uh, you know, we get to play there. And it's a huge home field advantage. You got a little bit of mud, a little bit of wetness, some slippery grass, um, a dirt track. Hey, I love it. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, again, we just got to take care of business first. Uh, Laguna is a very, very good team. Extremely well coached. Um, so, you know, we got our hands full. Coach, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Uh, my, my high school, which was West Valley, not West Valley and Hemet, but West Valley way up north near Oregon, we called our football field the pasture because it was literally – a cow pasture. It was all beat up. It was like, it looked like muddy hoof marks in the mud. Like it was just nasty by the end of the year. And uh, yeah, we called it the pasture, but we loved it. Other teams hated it, but we loved it. So there is a really interesting scenario with this game with Laguna Beach. Um, one of their assistants was the head coach at Cypress High School when I was at freshman coach there and I worked with him it was 35 help out Laguna and uh he called me out of the blue when I won my 200th game and it's really ironic now that we're playing them um 
Haven't seen him in over 30 years. So I'm pretty excited about that. <laughs> You'll see him on Friday night. <laughs> um, yes, we will. Big semifinal game. Coach Batdorf, listen, I really appreciate the time. Best of luck on Friday against Laguna Beach. And hopefully uh, we'll see you guys playing again on Friday, the following, maybe in Riverside. That'd be awesome. It would be tremendous. And I just, just hope our kids come out. Um, I know we have a bunch of kids that are sick. We need to get healthy. We need to come out and play well. And, you know, if we do that, I'm happy. If our kids play hard, play Norte Vista football, that's all I could ask. Coach, you're the best. Listen, I really appreciate it. I know you're in your truck. You're on the move, go, going home, going to <laughs> practice, getting dinner, whatever you're doing. I, I really appreciate it. Good luck on Friday. You bet, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, that's head coach Ken Batdorf here on the Inland Sports Show. And coach, you do not have to stay on Zoom. You can log off. You can go do what you got to do as the show rolls on here, but I do really appreciate it. All right, Johnny, uh, I know I went a little bit out of order, but let's take a look at those semifinal games in the Inland Sports Show coverage area. Uh, we've got seven of them, if you don't count CSDR and eight-man football, but we've got seven 11-man football uh, semifinal games involving local teams. We'll start in Division 5. Aquinas taking on St. Francis. They will go on the road. Uh, San Jacinto taking on Calabasas. Calabasas coming back out to the Inland Empire this week. It was Calabasas versus Ramona in the quarters. Now it's Calabasas taking on the Jack in D6. Division 8, we got two teams. The Rancho Verde at home to take on Lakewood and Vista Del Lago will hit the road for Northwood if Rancho Verde and Vista Del Lago both win. They would play each other for the championship, and the game would be at VDL. Keep that in mind. Uh, Division 9, you just heard, Norta Vista on the road at Laguna Beach. Division 11, Rim of the World coming down the mountain to take on Walnut. And finally, in Division 13, the Cinderella run of the Eags. Arrowhead Christian Academy taking on Bishop Montgomery in Division 13 out there in Torrance. If the Eagles win, they will absolutely be home for the championship game. Of all those games you just saw, the uh, ACA Eagles are the only team that, regardless of the scenario, if they win in the semis, they will absolutely be home for that championship game. All right, uh, let's take a look at our Inland Sports quarterfinal All-Stars. We do this each and every week. This is from the quarterfinal round. Aquinas running back JoJo Solis popping off for 184 and a touchdown in that win against Alamany. San Jacinto wide receiver Dylan Gresham, he's back on the list. 238 receiving yards, three touchdowns, and a couple interceptions as well. The Rancho Verde QB landed to Brian, 275 through the air and four touchdowns and a rushing touchdown as well. Norta Vista running back to Marion Richardson, 37 carries. The guy's a workhorse, 185 yards and, a, and four touchdowns, including the game winner against Garden Grove in overtime. And rim of the world running back Zach Gross. Through the first two rounds of the playoffs, he has almost 400 rushing yards and he's got four touchdowns. He went for 194 in their quarterfinal win. And finally, Arrowhead Christian Academy defensive linemen and their brothers. David and John Luke Vega teaming up, combining to block the game tying extra point from Santa Paula to give the Eagles the win. ACA won 14 to 13. Thanks to the Vega boys as they block the extra point uh, with about a minute to go in that game. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break here on the Inland Sports Show when we come back more high school football as we get you set for this week, which is the semifinals. We'll be right back. What up, y'all? Boost Man here, gonna break you off with a quick two cent. As a student athlete, you should always focus on what you can control, your effort and your attitude. Now, what does that mean? That means that your actions are consistent with the expectations of your coaches, your teachers, and your parents. You can't always control wins and losses, but through great effort and attitude, you control the preparation and the process, setting up the best opportunity for the best outcomes. Boost Man.
Crap, can you hear me? Coach, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I got you. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're. Uh, yeah, it was. Our setup is a little bit different than normal. Than normal so uh, we're about to start the Oregon second. Ducks. And okay, somebody, sure. somebody in the Pac-12 had to step up and help USC, and and the Huskies did it. And now USC controls their own destiny. I know that they got the huge game against UCLA this week. So we're just week, recording tonight. Just and out, the show will be on UCLA. Wednesday night, like they normal. get to the Pac-12 okay. championship <laughs> game. They win that. Patrick, they might be in a spot to be one of the top four teams in the country. There is a path for the Trojans. Yeah, there is. And this Pac-12 championship game is going to be interesting, isn't it? It is. It's going to be a lot of fun. All of a sudden, the Pac-12 got really juicy uh, with the rise of USC and UCLA. Listen, I know the Bruins fell to Arizona over the weekend. So but I was still having a today, good coach. season. And if you're a good, UCLA man, football actually, fan, uh, what would you want more than to trip a, a up USC old, and their chance uh, to get to the college he lives football in, playoffs? Well, he lives out of state. The criticism so, uh, of the Pac-12 before he came by right the around like 5.30 it's pretty was amazing supposed to be done, and so I started talking to him. So yeah, and it got off on such a, a wrong foot. Started, Remember, at the beginning of the like, season, we talked about door. Oregon getting hammered <laughs> by <laughs> Georgia. Get I think Utah like lost at Florida. Like, it, it was, was like, good. oh, we had man, a good the Pac-12, I mean, you know, they, they don't have any good teams. They're, they can't compete to, with these other big-time you know, conferences. To go but, to. yeah, the, the Pac-12, over the course of the entire yeah. season, has gained a lot of respect. And right now, if you're just a West Coast football fan and you want to see a Pac-12 team in the college football playoff, USC looks like our best chance. Should I count it down control and just go? their own destiny and just win out. Okay. All right, stand by, coach. Okay. And welcome to the Inland Sports Show, everybody, live and amplified here at Team Vision TV 16. I'm your host, Pep Fernandez. We appreciate you tuning in as we get you all set for the CIF Southern Section semifinals coming up this week. And we've got a bunch of local schools. Still in the hunt for CIF titles, including the Rancho Verde High School. And that's where we're going to start tonight's show is with Mustangs head coach Eric Zomal. And coach, first off, congratulations on this incredible run um, in the back half of league play and into the playoffs here. Um, are you, I don't know, pleasantly surprised is, is the correct words we should use here. But um, it must be feeling pretty good to be here in the semifinals in Division Eight. It feels great. Like, I mean, from where we were four or five weeks ago, I mean, it was, it was looking, you know, pretty, pretty bleak for us. And we found a way to get a win, you know, uh, against Temesco and then, and then another win against Elsinore. And, and it gave us, gave us some, you know, some hope that we would qualify for the playoffs. And so it does. It feels great to practice at this time of year. I'm just going to call you Mr. November. Because every time November rolls around, I know a Coach Eric Zomal team is going to be there in the playoffs. But, Coach, what do you think this says about your team that, you know, even when things were rough, even through non-league play, this team never gave up. They still had hope, at, you know, that light at the end of the tunnel in terms of maybe making it into the playoffs. And, and here you are. There's only a handful of teams still playing this time of the year. And you guys never gave up. You know what? I mean, it's, it's a real kind of testament to, to these kids' character. And, um, and, you know, their commitment to the process because it's, and, I, and I've said it, you know, time and time again about the standard that, um, that Rancho Verde set for, for football for, for years. And so they've been kind of, um, you know, I don't know if it's unfair or, 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 or you know, fair or whatever, but, um, but it's just the reality that you carry that, that, you know, that name across your chest. And so, you have to deal with some of the um, the expectations, and it's it's good for people to, you know, um, to expect uh, you know uh, a lot from us, and I expect a lot from myself. So um, it, it's been a real process, and these kids have kind of stuck stuck with me and my coaches, and because um, it was they could have easily gone in the tank, and, and we were I think at one point one in six maybe. Um, and 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 they found a way to to, to win a couple of games, and then once we got in, and it was. You know, let's just see how far we can how far we can take it, and it's it's been great so far. Yeah, big win against Elsinore. The first time you played the Tigers, it was a one touchdown game. The second time, uh, you guys won by several touchdowns in the quarterfinals. So now you're back home. 
in the semifinals against Lakewood. Uh, Coach, what do you like about the way your team is playing right now as you go to the semis? You know what? what I, the, the most important thing is that we're healthy. I mean, we when we started to make some progress, um, you know, coming off of like back to back routes in, in, you know, week two and week three that Citrus Valley and Etiwanda, you know, really like top tier programs. But like nobody cares. They look at the score and, um, and we were on the, the, you know, the short end of it. Um, we started to make some progress against a really good San Jacinto team and our quarterback went down. And the following week, um, our our best player on defense, our middle linebacker, uh, Johnny Zoma, the, the great Johnny Zoma, I think you called him on one of his highlights. It was hilarious. Um, he went down, and so we were just kind of in a tough a tough position going into league. And um, and and then now that we're starting to get kids, uh, you know, healthy and, and and back on board, and we're we're whole again, and our our understanding of like the like the preparation and the process that it, that it takes every day has grown throughout the course of the season. And so that like health is, is the most important part of it, but, but also our, our development throughout this journey. Well, coach, I'm uh, old enough to remember the triplets, the Dallas Cowboys triplets, um, you know, quarterback, running back receiver. And I feel like if, you know, great teams always have like that big three, right. And I feel like your QB landed to Brian, Dylan Riley at uh, running back and a Marion orange is only a sophomore, which is crazy. I feel like you've got a great set of triplets right there. I mean, those are kind of like your your big three, at least offensively yeah. right now. How how well are they clicking right now in the playoffs? You know, everything the the Dylan not Dylan Landon was the first person that I um, uh, reached out to when um when I when I took I, actually I think he might have reached out to me, but he was the first person I was you know concerned about maybe losing in this process when I took the job. You know, um, um, it, it, when you're a, 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 as talented a quarterback as he is. You know, people will be in your ear and, and, you know, try to convince you to 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 jump ship. And so he's all and I think that's part of the reason why you know so many people had us, you know, ranked uh, so high early in the season is because of what he had done in the past and, and what we hoped he would be able to do this year. Um, it's been a process, um, you know, without a doubt, trying to get everybody on the same page up front and our other skill guys. But Landon, uh, Dylan and Amarion are a, a real threat on any given play to, uh, you know, to, to make something special happen for sure. All right. Finally, coach, without giving away your secrets, you know, you play uh, Lakewood this Friday with a win would send you to the championship game. What do you know about Lakewood? What do you think are the keys to the victory for the Mustangs on Friday night? You know, they have some, some uh, really good skill, skill kids and they play with a, a, a lot of kind of enthusiasm on defense. They're active on defense. Um, but, you know, like I, I tell our kids all the time, I want us to get whatever we deserve and whatever we earn. And so it's always been about us. And um, if we go out and execute, and I think we've started to show people um, what that kind of the realization of our full potential, like what it looks like. And, um, and so if we go out and, and, you know, execute at a high level, then, um, then I feel like we should, uh, we should be okay. Coach, I always appreciate the time. You're always so generous with your time. And again, this is a very uh, important week for the Mustangs, but you still hopped on the show. And I, I really do appreciate that, Coach. No, I appreciate you, Pep, man. You always, you know, like I, when I continue to say it, man, what you do for for these kids and these programs and IE, man, it's, it's you know, it's truly appreciated and it's special. And, um, and we love you for it. Hey, it's all my pleasure, Coach. That's Eric Zomal, the head football coach for the Rancho Verde taking on Lakewood in the D8 semifinals this week. A win would send the Mustangs to that championship game. And first things first, let's pack uh, Rancho Verde this Friday night. Get those Mustangs a win and get them to the D8 championship. Thanks again, Coach. We really appreciate it. Yes, sir, Pep. You got it. Anytime. All right. That is Coach Eric Zomal from the Rancho Verde here on the Inland Sports Show. Before we wrap things up, let's take a look at our big boost play of the week because it is from Rancho Verde. This game was on Team Vision TV 16 this past week, and it was Landon DeBryan hitting his man, a Marion Orange. And check out the move by Orange to get down the sideline and in for the touchdown. That would be the first of many scores for the Rancho Verde offense as they go on that big win against Elsinore live on Team Vision TV 16. And it's our big boost play of the week. So when we come back, more high school football will take you to Aquinas and also Rim of the World. So bundle up. We'll be back on the Inland Sports Show.
I would say the one thing that uh, we stress more than anything else is service to our customer. Make sure that they're taking care of whatever you can do to make sure that that order gets to them on time and it's the right quality and, and what they want. I've been that way since 1976. That was my goal, to reach out to local uh, sports programs and it's grown from there and we've been very, very fortunate. My grandson is right over here. He's working for us and he's going to college right now. And, and uh, that's exactly what my son did uh, 20 some years ago. And it keeps on going, you know. And we have customers that come in the store that it's amazing. Uh, people that I haven't been here since I was a little kid. And I used to come in here all the time and then my now I'm bringing my son in here, or, or a grandpa that's bringing his grandson in here that, that came in here when we first opened back in 76. We just feel so fortunate to have been a part of this community and this Inland Empire uh, for going into our 44th year now, and um, it's just been a, a blessing. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pep Fernandez at the Boost Performance Center with the one and only Ray Bass, the Boost Man. And Ray, very exciting in this Grit Iron Question Series. We've got some great questions because you're the guy with the answers. So, Ray, our, our first Grit Iron Question is, you know, there's a lot of great athletes from different sports that come here to the Boost Performance Center. Mm -hmm. um, what about the girls out there? There's a lot of boys here at Boost, but Boost is for the girls as well, right? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, girls can absolutely benefit. You know, from my 10 years of experience working with youth athletes, one of the things that I see is I don't see as many girls participating in a robust strength and conditioning program like you see boy athletes do. And the reality is, is that they work just as hard, if not harder, than boys do. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you have higher instances of, of injuries with girl athletes, um, you know, like ACL tears. And it really boils down to proper movement mechanics and getting stronger. Uh, and then when I talk about getting stronger, I'm talking about cleaning, pressing, you know, squatting and deadlifting, you know, all of those big lifts that can help you not only become more durable, but helps you become a better overall athlete. You know, girl athletes benefit from that type of training just as much as boys do. Man, that was awesome, Ray. Thank you so much. And if there's a parent out there watching this right now and they've got a question for the Boost Man, make sure you're following Boost Training on social media. You can also send us a question. We'd love to hear from you. So until next time, we'll see you with another Grit Iron question here from Boost Training. CBU basketball is the most exciting sports experience in the Inland Empire and the best value in Southern California. See every dunk, every magic play, and every win. Inside the beautiful CBU Event Center, Southern California's newest NCAA Division I arena. And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. Continuing to preview the CIF Southern Section semifinals coming up this week. And these guys are always in the semifinals. The Aquinas Falcons football team head coach Jordan Brusick back on the show as uh, the Falcons are in the D5 semifinals. They will hit the road for St. Francis this upcoming weekend. And, and, and coach, coach, first off, congratulations to get to the semifinals. But I feel like when you coach or play at Aquinas, that's the standard. That's like the, that's the bare minimum. It's like, let's get to the semifinals because you guys have such big goals with this football program in terms of CIF titles, you know, getting to state championship games, those sorts of things, right? So, I mean, you, you feel like this is where you guys belong. You should at least be in the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, we're, we've been pretty, pretty blessed to, to be here a few times and, and uh, all, the, all the credit goes to these kids that have been coming through our program. You know, we got guys that just completely sell out with their faith and, and, and buying into what we do. Um, we, we don't really ever talk about the, where we're going as a goal, but um, 
the, the things that we do and getting there is will happen if we do the things that we do week in and week out. And, um, you know, it's never perfect, but, you know, we try to get as close as we can to that. And, and uh, you know, here we are again. You know, Coach, is this your, is it seventh season? If you count, you count the COVID year? I think it's eight if you count the COVID year. Is I'm it not, eight? I'm not going to count the winless, <laughs> winless year. <laughs> well, Coach, let's rewind when you first took the job at Aquinas High School. I know you're an Aquinas alum, so obviously that was important to you to come back into the program, as, at least as the head coach. I know you'd been coaching, but did you ever imagine this is where it would be right now, seven, eight years in as the head coach with several CIF championships, you know, trips to state title games, one of the top programs in the IE now? Like, did you, did you even imagine, like, you'd be at, at this spot right now? No, um, not even. Just trying to do our best to uh, uphold the tradition with the guys that coached that were head coaches before me. I mean, they set such a high standard and, and the expectation uh, to play Aquinas football is always the number one thing on our mind, no matter, no matter what 10 and 0 and doing it the way that uh, isn't the way we do things is not the, is not the, you know, the recipe. So um, whether we're, we're four and six or 10 and 0, we need to do things the way that, you know, I was taught the way the coaches were taught and, um, you know, just, you know, in the beginning, really not trying not to screw it up. We were really, we were so lucky to get to, I mean, we were blessed and lucky to get there. We had such great kids and to get to the semifinals of my very first year was, um, unbelievable. I mean, we took our shot for sure, but, um, it, it, uh, it's been an incredible, incredible journey and, and uh, just really blessed to be at Aquinas and with the people that are there and they believe in us so much and, and uh, allow us to do the things that we need to do to, to remain successful. So um, yeah, it's the tradition is honoring those that came before us and preparing those that follow and, and uh, we stick to that every day. Well, Coach, speaking of doing it for the guys that came before and continuing that legacy, you've got another great running back in JoJo Solis. In fact, Aquinas, and I think most people know this, Brandon Rankins is the all-time leading rusher in San Bernardino County history. you got another special guy in JoJo Solis. Um, talk about what he's meant to this program through the first two seasons. You've had him as a Falcon. And, you know, once you get to the playoffs – it's no secret if you can run the football and, and play defense, you're going to win a lot of football games. We'll get to your defense in a second, but JoJo's, you know, running the heck out of the football right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully he's just starting to, to peak a little bit here. You know, we um, he was banged up a little bit in the middle of the year, but um, he's remained pretty consistent every day and doing the things he needs to do to, to help this team. And, and he'll be the first to tell you that it's not about him and, there's a lot of great players on this team and, and he, um, you know, he's a really humble guy and, you know, looks up to Brandon and looks up to Terry on and looks up to these guys that, you know, he knows who Glenn O'Harry is. He knows who Cheeky and Dozy are. And that's, that's what it's all about. It's like that stuff never disappears for us. Um, and so he's doing his best to try and make sure that he's carrying the torch for that, for the running back group. Heck yeah. And he is, man. He's a really special guy and only a sophomore out there. Let's talk defense. I love defense. I love 15 to 13 games. Like, I'm okay with that. I'd rather see that than, like, 50 to, you know, 48. Like, I'd rather see those low-scoring games. But how fun or maybe how stressful are those playoff games when it comes down to a field goal attempt or a one-possession game? I mean, but you guys always seem to come out on the winning end of those games. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've lost our fair share of those ones, too, in the big ones. And – uh Luckily enough, this game we were able to to put the special team stuff together and not uh, lose those you know two points that got us that that win. Um, that that stuff was really important. But our defense, you know, for the last couple of weeks, even against Ontario, is you know they're going to get yards, but we can't break. Um, I mean, they they were just playing so hard the entire game. Coach Del Rosa had him had him locked in and and had him believe it. And uh, when you play against a team that's just gonna pound the rock and 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 doing it well, you know, coached very very well. Um, it was uh, definitely you know uh, stressful 
but you know, it, like we told the kids, you know, we're, we're watching you guys, you guys are out there doing it. You're throwing yourself in the trenches. It's a battle. And, and these guys did enough to get it done. Yeah. And our guy, uh, Jeremiah Claiborne, the Citrus Valley transfer, you know, running the rock for Alamany in that game. And coach, so, okay, so Alamany, obviously run heavy and you guys found a way to, you know, slow them down and hold them to 13 points. St. Francis this week, what do we know about St. Francis and their offense? They're good, man. Coach Harrington's got these guys dialed in. Quarterback's really good. Receivers are fast, run great routes. Running back, uh, the kid from Texas is, is a stud. You know, they play hard on defense, very physical. Um, they're just a really well-coached team. I mean, they were in the finals last year against Long Beach Poly, and for the first part of that game, had it right where they wanted them. Um, but, you know, Coach Harrington's teams are well-coached. We played against them when he, he was at Paraclete in that COVID year. Uh, and those teams were really successful. So um, it's going to take our very best effort uh, close to a per perfect game to get this one done. And But that's what you expect in the semifinals. Uh, and here, you know, every step gets a little bit harder, gets a little bit taller. Um, I just uh, excited to see our guys come out and perform because uh, it's a, it is a different game that we just played. But, you know, that's what you want. You know, you want to be able to challenge every part of your football team, and this one's going to do it. Can't wait. Should be a good one. Division five semifinals. Aquinas on the road at St. Francis. Coach, listen, best of luck on Friday. I'm a big fan of yours. You know that. Thank you for always making time for the Inland Sports Show. We really do appreciate it. And go Falcons. Thanks, Pat, man. Appreciate you, dude. All right. That is Jordan Brusick, the head football coach for the Aquinas Falcons here on the Inland Sports Show. When we come back, we will bundle up and head up the mountain. We'll talk a little rim of the world football with Joe Girado next here on the Inland Sports Show. What up, guys? Boost May here at the Boost Performance Center. You're watching the Inland Sports Show with the one and only Pep Fernandez. Calling all athletes. Make sure you're at your very best by training at Boost Performance Training in Corona. Whether you're a football player, soccer player, baseball player, lacrosse, athletes from all sports and all levels train at Boost Performance Training. Led by former Centennial High School football star Ray Bass, you'll develop explosive power, become faster, and add that lean muscle. Don't be left behind and get a leg up on the competition at Boost Performance Training. Visit BoostTrainingSystems.com for information on their training programs and also on the Bass School. That's the Bass Alternative School for Student Athletes. Trying to earn a scholarship? Maybe make the varsity team. Get a spot in the starting lineup? Well, let Boost Performance Training help achieve your athletic goals. Hey guys, this is Jason at Ken Sporting Goods. We're almost to 1,000 Instagram followers. Tell your friends, like us, come down, see us. Thank you so much for your loyalty. Welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, everybody. As we continue to preview the CIF Southern Section semifinals coming up, 
Let's bundle up and head up the mountain in Joe Girado, the head football coach for the Rim of the World Scots Division 11 semifinals. And coach, first off, congratulations on a great season so far. I know you're hoping there's still a couple more games uh, for the Scots coming up, but in Division 11, you guys are in the semis. You'll play on the road at Walnut. The season as a whole, or maybe even in, in, including the playoffs, what have you guys done well as a team this season that to got you to, that, to this point in the semifinals? We played in a long time and we've learned from our losses. We've learned from our mistakes and our kids have really started to understand the scheme of what we do, uh, the defenses that we see and every single week they get better and better. Well, coach, let's talk about your running back, Zach Gross, who's actually done the show before. Uh, 194 yards in that quarterfinal win. He's got 387 for the first two couple rounds of the two uh, you know, first round and quarterfinals in the playoffs here. One of the top running backs in terms of yardage in the state. Um, Rim of the world always churns out these great running backs, but what, what makes Zach special or maybe unique compared to some of those other great running backs that Rim of the world has turned out? Zach's physical. He's one of the most physical running backs I've worked with at Rim. You know, he's 220 pounds, he's six feet tall, and he runs downhill. He's not the fastest back that we've had but he's tough to bring down. I think that's what makes him so effective. Uh, just his, his, the difficultness in bringing him to the ground. Coach, you know, obviously you have some uh, distinct home field advantage up there, especially probably in the month of October too, but definitely in the month of November. I don't know if there's a lot of schools that want to go up the mountain and play you guys on your home field, um, especially come a playoff game. I know you guys are on the road this round, but what would it mean for the community up there to have a championship game back up on the mountain? Because the last time we were talking off air, the last time you guys made it to the finals, you weren't able to host it up there. You had to come down to Redlands to play at Citrus Valley. But I'd imagine that would be a special experience for that, for that school and that whole community up there. Yeah, it's never happened. It's never happened in the school's history. Uh, we've won a handful of CIF championships at Raymond football, and we've never hosted a championship game. We have that opportunity if the right teams win and we get by this week. Um, it would mean a lot to our community. We talked about it today with the boys about getting through this week, staying focused on the team in front of us so that we can possibly have that opportunity. But it would mean a lot to our community and to our school. Uh, like I said, we've never hosted a championship game in school's history. You know, go, going on the road in the semifinals to Walnut, without giving away all your secrets, the game plan for Walnut, but what do you know about them? What makes them a tough uh, opponent here in the semifinals? They can run the ball. They've got some tremendous running backs, good offensive linemen, and uh, just when you adjust to the running game, they air it out. So, you know, we're going to really try and replicate what they have on offense. Uh, you can never replicate your opponents, but, you know, we're going to do our best to, to stop their running game. Um, and then, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, we're going to do what we do. We're just going to go at them with, with uh, number seven and um, give them a little dose of rim football. <laughs> Coach, obviously getting to the playoffs, that's the goal, right? To, you know, compete for a league championship, get to the playoffs, make a run. So how, how much fun are you having right now playing this late into the season? Ah, I, I love it. Uh, you know, especially up in the mountains, it's 30 degrees at practice every single day. And, you know, we get to wear our jackets and I don't know how much the kids love the, the cold weather, but, um, you know, it's such a privilege and an honor to be playing this late in the season. And I don't take any of it for granted. I don't think any of our coaches or kids do. It's an amazing time. Coach, how long have you been with the rim football program? Cause you were saying you, you were with coach Grudias. How long have you been there? I was with Coach Cordillas for four years. Uh, I left for a few years, came back six years ago. So this is my 10th year working with the football program at RIM. You know, there's special pockets here in the Inland Empire where they, you know, they love football. It's, you know, I've, I've worked in some places where on Friday nights the, the town shuts down and everybody goes to the football game and everyone's a, a fan of that one, t you know, that one team in town. Um, what's it just like up there in the, the Lake Arrowhead area? Just, you know, the fact that you've got a great football team, you've got a great running back, you're one win away from a championship. It could be on the mountain. I mean, is, is, there, a, is there a buzz up there right now? Uh, absolutely. Our community is so supportive of our program and our kids and what we do. And uh, we've just seen uh, tremendous positive feedback 
from uh, different businesses in the community, especially our alumni. We have a great, strong alumni presence at every single game. Uh, you know, old timers wearing their Letterman's jackets and, you know, stopping by our team room and talking to the boys before and after games. Uh, there's a lot of excitement. And, and I think our players really feed off of that and they take a lot of pride in how the community feels about our program. Yeah, absolutely. Well, coach, listen, I really appreciate the time. You got Walnut on Friday. I'm hoping, I've seen the coin flips. I'm hoping you guys will host the championship game. That would be amazing. I haven't looked at the long-term forecast for the following weekend, uh, which would be Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. But um, that would be awesome if you guys could host the championship game. And I didn't know it was for the first time ever that, would, that history made on the mountain if that happens. Fingers crossed, Pat. We're going to do our best. All right, Coach, I really appreciate the time. Best of luck on Friday. It's Coach Joe Gerardo from Rim of the World High School here on the Inland Sports Show. Thank you so much, Coach. Really appreciate the time. All right, right now, before we wrap up this segment, let's take a look at our Ken Sporting Goods must-see game this week, and it's a rematch in the eight-man division championship game. Last year's Division II, now it's Division I. California School for the Deaf Riverside going on the road to take on the contenders from Faith Baptist. Faith Baptist, a eight-man football powerhouse and the Cubs last year, they came up short. It was 74-22, but pretty much all of their star players were injured in that game for CSDR. So I feel like it's going to be a different outcome this time around. We can only hope here in the IE, CSDR and Faith Baptist or Ken Sporting Goods must see game this coming week. And CSDR scored at least 50 points in every single game this season. And finally, our final Boost top 25 poll of the season. This is the last one we're going to do for the year, the final rankings, and it really didn't change from last week. We've only got a handful of teams uh, in our top 25 still playing right now. Centennial is going to end up on uh, at number one despite that tough uh, upset uh, loss to Mission Viejo in the D1 quarters this past week. There's the top 10. We did have to move Rancho Verde into the top 25. They are in the semis in Division 8. We put them right below Vista Del Lago, which could be a championship game in Division 8 if they both win this week in the semifinal. So a lot of big West Conference schools right there. Some uh, uh, some other teams from the old, you know, Southwestern League and the, obviously the old Big 8 League. There's Aquinas in at 7, Mountain Pass champ San Jacinto, Orange Vista, your uh, Ivy League champ right there, and Ramona coming in at number 10, your River Valley League champion. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Inland Sports Show. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, again, semifinal round. Our local teams, if they win this week in high school football, it's on to the championship games. The week of Thanksgiving, that'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll have several local teams reaching the championship games. For our director, Johnny Nunez, behind the scenes here at Team Vision TV 16, my name is Pep Fernandez. Stay safe out there, you guys. God bless you, and we will see you next time on your favorite show, The Inland Sports.